Yeah, I kind of don't know how to feel about those newborn photo shoots. I don't know how to feel about them. You should I do think one. It kind of looks. You weird. should do one for your thirtieth birthday. <laughs> no, 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 for yeah. your anniversary. That's with, in yes, now. actually. Oh my god, I'm reborn. Wait, how how many years has it been? <laughs> It'll be seven this year. Oh, that's too many. You're too old again. No, uh, <laughs> you got to start over. Seven, seven is, is the new one. One month old. Yeah, newborn. They they really happen right away. Seven <laughs> seven years. Seven months. Seven months. No, but you could. <laughs> you could do I'll be the, like it's a one month since my 30th birthday sure 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 sure. you're newborn 30 yeah my I'm newborn 30 so you can put a little like nude unitard on and like oh curl up God. in a bassinet <laughs> and so my 30th I don't want born. you to be actually naked I think that makes it weird but we're <laughs> hinting it's okay to be like hinting at naked yeah yeah it's okay to imply like, nudity like, like modern dance nude but not nude nude not nude nude your yeah. 30s are dirty 30 30 baby 30 30 are we ready emotionally? No. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I'm never emotionally There's never ready. Heard. Too bad. Welcome to Fine Pairing Season Six. Wow, 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 wow. Where's the boo I know. No, that is, no, no. That is stays in the luminal space of after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't be part of the real season. <laughs> That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guess what? Josie's here to do the opener work for us. Hello. Surprise. Surprise. Okay, surprise. Surprise. I right. set the tone. I set the vibe. That's set- how I see it. Yeah. I think it's like when you when you have an anniversary, you go out to eat. You don't cook because like then one of you has to do work and you can't like enjoy. <laughs> so we just make Josie do double the work. Yeah. 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 It's me. Instead. <laughs> It's fun to moonlight as like, hi, I'm here, but then also I don't do anything else. I think you also, I mean, I, I don't mind putting work in, see last episode that we posted, but I don't want to put that much work in for every episode of the season. Like I can't, I can't read a whole book for right. every episode. Right. You'd like doing that. I so would love it, to do that. It makes sense for you to do the opener because you like doing that amount of work. Exactly. But you can't do it every week. Speaking of books. Oh, no. Uh-oh. This fandom. Oh, no. Is based on a book. Oh, oh no. no. So I will I will map my journey for you. Yeah. How do we get here? I went through a couple of iterations. I was like, I'm going to do this. And I was sure. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. We've never done this before. Seems fun. I think the people will like it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thought about that for like a couple days. And then after like working my way through it, I was like, you know, I don't care about the people. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Fair. Oh, did other people want you to do this fandom? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. It's a requested fandom. Okay, but you couldn't find anything. And I just, well, I, I was just like, the I don't want to do it. inspired you. Yeah. It, grabbed it, you. it didn't feel right yeah. in my soul. For an, and the opener has to really be like yes. full in. Again, yeah. maybe it's like, is it like opening song number? Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, you, know? you can't. Like, get you can't, the people out their seats. Yeah, you can't have your like, uh, like character bit be the opening number. Right. Everyone likes this, but like you can't need, open with it. I need it to feel like you need a full chorus. The prologue of Into the Woods. There like, you go. That's yeah. the spirit. We really gotta intro every single character. We gotta have a high energy. Yes. <laughs> like we gotta have a good harmony. It's gotta stay in your head. Yeah. Forever and it ever. Maybe can, it maybe has to come back later on. Like exactly. you really gotta remember it. You gotta reprise. <laughs> a lot of work. It's gonna have some meaning. Yes. Meaning. We gotta have some connections. Okay. Uh-oh. So, thought about doing it for the people, decided not to. Fuck you, people. <laughs> thought about doing it for Claire. Oh. Had some ideas for Claire. Oh. Had some ideas for you. Interesting. Would love to hear what those were later. <laughs> I might use them okay. at a different point in time, so that's why I'm not telling you what they were. Claire. But I, I thought about that, and I was like, they would like this. This would be fun for them. Mm-hmm. And then I decided... All for me. No. <laughs> All for, for Josie. <laughs> so then I was like, what do I like? Yeah. What speaks to me? What like brings me intense joy? Uh-oh. Fantasy novels. Uh, yes. Ha. <laughs> and so I also. Is it a good one or a bad one? <laughs> I dove into this tag. And yeah. then I also remembered in our time here, mm-hmm. I have only given one prompt. Mm-hmm. And this season, the framework of this overall season, which we can talk about more at the end of the episode, is that we are redoing prompts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we did like an intense multi-week Instagram showdown. Yes. That is our theme of the season, is yes. redoing, not all of them. The prompts the of best. our past. Yes. The most popular prompts. The most popular prompts. And doing them ourselves. Yes. So like if I gave Claire a prompt, now I have to go back and do it. Exactly. So you're doing, redoing the one prompt you So I've only given? given one prompt. Do you remember what it was? Sure. I'm no. going to get the name wrong. Shadow and Bone. Shadow yes. of Bone. 
Shadow. You did. You did call it Shadow Thorn and of bone. Bones. Shadow and Bone. It's Shadow and Bone. And Bone. Okay. Shadow or Bone. <laughs> shadow the Bone. <laughs> so Shadow and Bone is the first to. I'm gonna reiterate. I'm gonna explain this whole thing again because yeah. why not? Shadow and Bone is the first trilogy in the larger mythical world called the Grisha verse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the duology, which again is one of the best books that I've ever read. Six of Crows, and the second book is Crooked Kingdom. So that's what I dove in. I was like, I want to read about Kaz motherfucking Brecker. So, so, we're going to start with the drink first. Uh-huh. Because I, I feel like I just want to get it out we're of We're definitely not dropping the shot into the beer. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> you filled it all the time. Yeah, I was so. going to say, I'm not doing that again. The connection to the drinks uh-huh. is Six of Crows takes place in a city called Ketterdam. Ketterdam is like a city. Okay. That is based off of a couple of places. Mm-hmm. I feel like the most obvious connection is Amsterdam, which is mm-hmm. in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, it's so also it's like a, a hub of like, not partying, but like. Actually, yes. There's like <laughs> gambling halls and like brothels and people are there. Are like It's it's like a city of vice. Okay. Las Vegas. Yes. So it's based off of, it's a base of a variety of cities, but like Amsterdam, because there are canals and because it's called Ketterdam, I feel like the natural connection yeah. <laughs> Is Amsterdam. Damn, damn. <laughs> so when I was looking for drinks, I was like, I could do a deep cut, like magic system thing. And then I was like, that's kind of complicated. What if we just go historical? What if we just look at Netherlands drinks? Like, what are they drinking in the Netherlands? Yeah, I don't think I would know off the top of my head. No. And so <laughs> what is before you is a glass of beer mm-hmm. mine is still in the bottle because mm-hmm. i you want to pop it live i want to pop it live <laughs> and a shot glass of course mm-hmm. it's called a kopstout which means head bump uh-oh a kopstout is a shot of geneva which is dutch gin oh mm. followed oh. by the beer what's brilliant about this and and i was not able to recreate this because this is actually like kind of difficult to do is normally this shot Mm -hmm. is served in a fairly specific tulip glass okay and it's filled because it's a liqueur it uh it like goes over the glass technically like you're supposed to fill it all the way to the top and there's a Mm. little bit and there is this strange process like traditional way to drink it which is that you put your hands behind your back Mm. and you lean forward (laughs) And you like slurp the top bit of the oh, so it's not going to spill. <laughs> yeah, so you don't you don't spill it, and yes. that's like I think that's why they call it a head bump. And the reason why I found that particularly brilliant is because Cosbrecker doesn't like touching people, and he especially doesn't like skin to skin contact. He's always wearing gloves. That's a part of his character. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, so like traditionally you like drink this drink. You don't and touch you it. Don't touch it. The and whole I was thing like, though, or do you drink the head and then take a shot? You you like slurp it and then you pick it up. Okay, I was gonna say so slurping the whole thing sounds difficult. That sounds weird, <laughs> but also yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I'm gonna here pop him. Ooh, nice, good sound. ASMR. In season six, glug, we do glug, ASMR. Glug, glug. We do we do ASMR in really weird drink pairings. No, so far it's no. not weird. I'm not saying it's weird. I'm brilliant. Very nice. different pairings. Okay. What makes this gin different than other gins? Like, what's their? This is card? not the time to ask me while we're about to drink it. Oh, I'm good just. Lord. It smells tequila-y. That's why I was a little confused. Ooh, I, I shouldn't have smelled it. It's a... Oh, it, I don't like that. It is. It's a little tequila-y. Oh, what? what no, it's that? not. I thought Whoa. it was... No. Uh, <laughs> the, the tang. No, it's not. The tang. <laughs> it doesn't taste like gin. No. Ooh. So this is where gin comes from. Yeah. Oh, that is, beer is good. That beer is good. It's super German beery. Yes. Yes. <laughs> definitely. Clay's not having a good time. Uh, Wow. There were there were none of the herbal notes of gin. Gin that I had a taste, very like vodka. That's what I, yeah, like, it tasted like stronger than it was supposed that to. That was like vinegar. Like it like had such really a weird multi. forward note. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then it like it like started weird and I was like, what is this? Real, Maybe this won't be bad. And real then it was hard like, tang. Yeah. It's Ooh. it's like um I think it's like a malted wine, technically. Mm. Oh. Um, but it is juniper. Did not taste juniper. But yeah, it didn't have the like herbaceous. I got the I got the juniper. Um it's right at the front. That was better and worse than I thought it was going to be. I thought this would be a little bit smoother, honestly. I didn't hate it. That was hard. That it's was not the worst shot I've ever had on this podcast. Nope. 
it's, it's not the that, easiest shot I've had on this podcast. I would put I would put that as the worst for me. <laughs> I was gonna say how you felt about this. Uh, I felt about pickleback. <laughs> I don't know, man. You were really, you were really terrified of the jalapeno bag. It was less about the taste and more about the physical body reaction that I didn't right, know how to right, anticipate. Right. You know, it happens. I know, I know. It was there was a lot of mental stuff happening. Yep. Again, I told you, you can skip. I didn't want to throw up on my friends. You know, I also didn't want you to throw. <laughs> that up. would have been uh, <laughs> really would have been a little downer. Ruin the vibe. How do we recover? Ruin the vibe. Also, I didn't throw up on the floor <laughs> <laughs> while we recorded. While we recorded live. <laughs> while we recorded live. <laughs> Anyway, okay. Anyway, 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 anyway. back so, on track. Okay, so Cos Brecker of this gang, he becomes like the mob boss, but he's like first mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's kind of like a dark, broody character. Like he's he's like a grumpy, like stoic man. He's like gone through some shit, and he has a big motivator for him throughout the whole duology is revenge. Mm. Um, yeah. so that's mm-hmm. kind of what he's like powered Classic. by. And then Inej, he <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Who are you Same. getting revenge Relatable. on? That's for me to know. <laughs> yeah, I truly don't know. So you've kept that and for me this whole time. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I'm so lame motivated by my thirst for my revenge. I- Imagine like your best friend just being like, I have been seeking revenge for 10 years and you just have no fucking idea who it is. Or you're like, who? And you're like, you'll find out. I haven't. We've been friends for no, so long. you'll long. find out. <laughs> Season six is Why where- hasn't it come up yet? You'll find out. Season, Season six, six is where Claire revenge. just blows out the mic every episode. Yes. Yes. Finally, my right? time to shine. You blew out the mic a lot in season one because I didn't know how to edit. And that's fine. And because we were talking on a headset. <laughs> and the mic. Say, I didn't know how to use the mic. Hashtag only one mic. Rip, and only hash- one mic. Only one mic. And I didn't know how to use it. <laughs> and they were co-hosts. <laughs> as long as you're not getting the revenge on me, I you can have your own, you can my have own your, plot line. You can have your own heroin arc. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Anyway, what are we actually doing? Anyway, okay. So then <laughs> Anej um, yeah. is who he is shipped with. Their relationship is canonical. And she is... Oh God, how do I describe her? <laughs> she's just a fucking badass. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's fine. Her function in the gang is she's causes spider. So she uh, is very acrobatic. There's a whole backstory, which I will is probably like get into in Is she like a Yes, kind of. But like, that's not necessarily what she does. Okay. She she can like climb buildings and like how she travels through Ketterdam often is like over rooftops. Um, And so she'll like scout a location like Mm. from up high and she'll like break in and like steal stuff. And that's that's who she is. And Um, and she is like very well adept with all of her knives. That's like her main weapon Mm -hmm, of choice. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cos Brecker has a cane. He like had an injury. Oh, yeah. He has a cane. I forgot about that. And so he has a cane as like a mobility aid that also doubles as his primary weapon. Cool. Okay, so the fic we have today, it is called A Kiss with the Tip of a Blade by Charquette. The summary is five touches through their armor and one touch skin to skin. (gasps) It's a five plus one? Yes. Ah! Which is also like my, I think that's like my favorite. It's a great prop. It is a great prop. If you ever need a writing exercise, just do a five plus one. Yes. And I loved, that's one of my favorite episodes of all time, the five plus one that you brought. It's so good. Last season. So good. And it's so good. So I got in touch with the author. We have permission to read this. Uh, They said, I'm just going to read to you what they said. Uh, you can call me Sharky. I'm queer, non-binary. Pronouns they, them. Nice. The fic is based on the Shadow and Bone show more than the books, which okay. is interesting because one of my gripes when I was digging through this tag is I wanted Cos Brecker to feel like Cos Brecker. Yeah. Like, he's got a lot of, like, internal dialogue that is, like, mm. really important and kind of helps shape his character. But he's, he's very he, angsty. Yeah, he's a very, he's very much like a, like an anti-hero kind of person. And a lot of that comes out in his internal monologue. Yeah, yeah. Would and you say that the TV show accurately portrayed that, even though they don't no. show his internal monologue? Not in the first season, no. The cause Brecker in the show is what I, how I would, I would describe him as, like, a little more human and, like, a little less smart. In the show? 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, Klaus Berger in the books is a, is a mad genius. And okay. he's dark. And he's, like, revenge. Like, brick by brick, I'm going to get my revenge. Right. I wanted that, like, dark the feeling. Grit. Yeah, I wanted that grit. And I feel like a lot of the Klaus Breckers that I found in other fix were just a little more lighthearted. Yeah. Which is fine. But that's not what I was looking that's for. That's not the core yeah. of who he is. No. I'm like, give me fucking... Really great Give me grit. dirty hands, Okay. That's his nickname. Dirty hands? Yes. Because he has the gloves. And so there's this whole like lore about like what, what's, yeah, under, what's the under the gloves. Oh, they think he's like, oh. Deformed. It's not Voldemort, but someone in Harry Potter has like ashen uh, Peter, hands. Peter Pettigrew is missing a hand? Are you thinking No, no, no. That? I think I might be thinking. No, it's like they're uh, like, uh, not Mitch McConnell, but like somebody has like full like Also bla- Mitch McConnell has <laughs> black so, ass no, hands. somebody in Harry Potter has like black hands, right? Am I insane? <laughs> I think a little bit. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you about. sure you're not thinking of Mitch McConnell? I am also thinking of Mitch McConnell now, but no, like someone has like shriveled hands. Like Dumbledore has shriveled hands it in is, the final book. Yes, yes, it is Dumbledore. Thank or you, God. For the second not, to last oh book. Oh my God, I'm because not insane. He, no, Dumbledore had shriveled hands yes, because he was like he destroying the, the ring. He and he was yeah. doing a thing and everyone was like, yeah. why are your hands like that? Okay, no, it's Dumbledore. No, no. He's Dumbledore. Yes. He's, okay. got, he's got Dumbledore and ash hands. unlike Dumbledore, Mitch McConnell was not destroying a horcrux for the no. betterment of man. Right, exactly. He has black hands but from if, But if someone wore gloves all the time, you'd be like, God. does he not have hands? Are his hands <laughs> black and shriveled? The hellfires are looking at his hands. Does he have old <laughs> man <laughs> hands? What are, what's going on with Kaz's hands? <laughs> Sorry. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> don't open the DVD player. I spent hey, hey, hey. too long trying to figure out why Mitch McCann will have black hands, so we I'm don't... very invested. <laughs> he killed. He broke a Horcrux. It's fine. <laughs> the only Horcrux he broke is his own. <laughs> okay. I was, I was yeah, anyway. Nice. So yeah, there's like lore about like Cosbrecker has like permanently, like his hands are red from the blood, like permanently stained. Sure. Like, that whole thing. Anyway, anyway, to get back to uh, what Sharky emailed me, <laughs> the fic is based on the Shadow and Bone show more than the books. It also has a one-sided Jesper Cause standalone in the same series, which I also read. It's very good. It's longer. That's part of the reason I didn't pick it, but also I li- I'm a Kinez shipper, so like I need that. That's where my heart is. So. Yeah. I'll probably write more when S2 comes out, and I will definitely read all of that shit. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for me. <laughs> I'm, Thanks, I'm assuming it's Thank a gift you, for me personally. It is. Thank you. In advance. I fandom hop and pretty much write fic for whatever show catches my eye when I'm trying to avoid my non-fic writing projects. Ha ha. Nice. Uh, so then they Turns said, out they're a political journalist. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Turns out. <laughs> for the, my dream. For WAPO. Yeah. Yeah. They write for Politico and in their free time. <laughs> write. write. What is the, the ship name? Kaz, Kazesh? Kanesh. 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 Yes. Kanesh. They continue. Um, I got into fic for this fandom and specifically this pairing because I wanted to explore Kaz's whole touch averse thing and how mm. it impacts his relationships. <gasps> Ooh. Also, Ooh. I just like writing about stylish criminals, which fucking Kaz Brecker absolutely This is not is. smut, though? Uh, no. Ooh. Because oh. it's, the fi- it's, the, it's the main fade, Greg. That feels like it could get smutty really fast, man. I, know, I don't I know, know. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, okay. I'm so ready. Ready? <laughs> yes. I'm so ready. All right. One. Uh-oh. <gasps> the rain came down in sheets as caused to guard by the gate. The hood of a stolen cloak turned up to shield him from the worst of the weather. His breath plumed on every exhale, but the wet and the cold kept enough people inside and out of his way that the discomfort and poor visibility were an even trade. The mansion at his back was dark, but probably warm, and certainly dry. Warmer and drier than the slat, anyway. Not Mm -hmm. that that was saying much. But money was more important than comfort, and money was what had brought them to this doorstep. Uh, The slat is where they all live in the Mm, crows. Okay, I was going to say, it sounds like the name of a neighborhood or something. Or, rather, to its third-floor window, which was Inej's entry point. Kaz hadn't watched her scale the wall, spider-like, and creep inside, but he could imagine it clearly. He didn't need to check his watch to know that her time was up. He had it all in his head, mapped out down to the second. She should be easing the window back open now, climbing down the wall. She would drop the last ten feet and land as silent as a cat, despite the rain pooling on the ground and amplifying every sound. Then it was two hundred steps from the wall to where he stood by the gate, which was the only exit from the property, unless she wanted to fight her way through the five-foot-deep perimeter of thick, tangled blackberry bushes with their wickedly sharp thorns. Kaz had stashed the original guard out of sight under the hedge after bludgeoning him unconscious with his cane and stripping him of his cloak. Oh, also, as normal, this was like seven some thousand words and I cut it down. 
It was really hard to cut down. When was this written? This down. Uh, I think it was last year, 2021. Let me check. Let me check. It's reminding me, like back, like way back when you gave me the prompt, there was some kind of like Kaz sneaking into her house, and I was like, wait a minute, have I read this fic? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> I don't think it existed at the time. I don't think so. It, I don't remember it being a five plus one, but I was worried for a moment <laughs> that I had read this fic. <laughs> that would be incredibly one of these so days, funny. We'll all of a sudden just be like. You'll be reading a fic I read in like season four. And I'll be like, why does this feel so familiar? So familiar. This was published last May. Okay. No, I wouldn't have read this before. And Nege came up behind him like a shadow, silent as death itself. And if he weren't so attuned to her presence, he would never have known she was there. He knew it annoyed her, his ability to pinpoint her location like that. He didn't even do it intentionally anymore. Mm-hmm. It was like his body had decided to recognize hers alone out of everyone else in the world. And now he would know her even if he were struck blind and deaf, absolutely senseless, left alone in the dark. Ooh. But he couldn't tell her that. So when she asked, he just gave her a crooked smirk and told her to try harder to go undetected next time. Brat. What a brat. I just, I'm not going to tell you how, but like, I knew you were there. You're just uh, <laughs> not as quiet as you think you uh. are. I'm I know you like, think you're sneaky, but you're not. You're not you're sneaky. Not. not to me, you're not. Be sneakier. I'm just attuned to all of your senses. I know your buddy. <laughs> but not in a creepy way. But not in a trench coaty way. <laughs> just like a regular super genius way. A regular friend way. A regular crow way. <laughs> a crow. Now was the time to make clear his identity, to drop his cane into view or turn his head so she would see his face. Yeah. But he didn't. He trusted her instincts and ability to recognize him without him having to give himself away. He trusted her, but he was also testing her to see whether she was just as finely attuned to him. If she wasn't, her knife would be hilt deep in him before he even heard her draw it from its sheath. He held his breath, body trembling as he waited. It was a stupid chance to take, but he needed to know. Inej pulled up short, a fraction of a second away from burying her knife in his back. They both stood frozen, breath coming hard. She had passed the test, but just barely. The tip of her knife pressed against the shell of his coat, digging in right between his shoulder blades. Cause, she breathed. I could have killed you. But you didn't. Idiot, she hissed. As he turned to face her, quietly reveling in the fact that he had been right, that she did know him, her knife flashed silver in the rain as she flipped it around, reversing her hold, and struck him in the chest with its hilt, ha. right over his heart. Double brat. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Double brat. He went rigid, every muscle tensing at the contact as his gaze flashed up to meet hers. That would feel scary. That would, <laughs> right? Yeah, that wouldn't feel good. Just, I'll be like, I'm wait. not going to stab you, but I'm going to punch you with the end of my sword. But like, yes. first you'd be like, oh my god. Did you just stab me? And then you'd be like, oh, no, no I, but I, that was scary. I guess I can't tell, but it seems like she made it clear that she wasn't going to stab him, but she, she gonna was going to hurt him. But then she was like, I could stab asshole. you. This is what it would have felt like. As a marshmallow. I don't like that. It's like when you grab someone, but you like flick them instead of just Cause like, oh, is not a marshmallow. I don't like that. No, he's not a marshmallow. I don't like that. I need to let you know. I know he's not a marshmallow. You're, I feel like you'll understand this. You're the Wylan of this podcast. <laughs> How dare you? Who's Wyatt? <laughs> oh, dare you. So you're probably not wrong, but how dare you? What are you guys talking about? So, okay, there's a joke about, like, who's the Wylan of your friend group? Uh, and it's, so Wylan, he's chosen to go on this heist, and there's a reason he's chosen. This but- is also Shadow and Bone. <laughs> No, six no of this is Six of Crows. This okay. is the heist. It's like okay. let's it's like let's create a super team to break into this fortress. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's like, you're picking Wylan? And Kaz is like, yes. And Wylan's like, why am I here? Why am I here? But also, I can do explosions. Like he's he's supposed to be a demolitions expert. Like he creates explosions and creates distractions. Like that's what his expertise is. Okay. And everyone there is like, no offense, man, but like you're not as good. As this other guy. Like, why Why are we bringing you? Is he the charisma? No. No. <laughs> he's just got, like, full imposter syndrome, and he's just there. Yeah. The thing is, Wyatt is, in fact, capable, and he's, like, a heart of gold. But, like, he is the mar- like he is the person who would cry. Yeah, he's, like, yeah. He's the person who's, like, but why do yes. I have to blow people up? What if we could just, Can we know, just do some hi? diplomacy? <laughs> yes. And then you're, like, you're, you're literally the bombs expert. I don't understand. <laughs> How are you both? Okay, okay. Back in, back in, back in. So she has the, the hilt of her knife to his heart. 
She looked furious. Very her, erotic, but in a not erotic way. <laughs> her fist resting against his breastbone, where she held the blade, solid warmth and pressure through all those layers of clothes. He couldn't move out from under it, panic rising in his lungs until she blinked, and the fury in her eyes was replaced with shock. She withdrew her hand like she'd been burned. Sorry, she said quickly. He steeled himself against the sensation and forced himself to turn away, as if nothing were amiss, though his grip on his cane was tighter than it had been before. Mm. Let's go. Without waiting for her response, he set off, and every step he took, every cold lashing raindrop that struck his face, distanced him from that unexpected touch. The skin of his chest crawled, though there was three layers of fabric between it and where her hand had been. Cause, she said, her steps silent, even as she hurried to keep up with him. It's fine, he said shortly, not slowing or glancing her way. They returned to the crow club without another word. His leg ached from the cold and the rain, the pain only growing more pronounced as he climbed the stairs to his office, Kane striking each step with a sharp sound in between the uneven rhythm of his footfalls. Only when they were sequestered in his room, with the stolen satchel of Kruga sitting on the desk between them, did Inej speak again. Kruga is money. Kaz. She stood with both hands braced on, against the desk, waiting for him to acknowledge her. Reluctant to have the conversation she seemed intent on forcing, he finally glared at her with a dead-eyed stare. I know you don't like it. Being touched. I won't ask why. That's not my business. I just want you to know that it won't happen again. Oh, it was that she touched him, not that she was, like, threatening him. <laughs> he believed her. She knew how to use her body as a weapon. She had control over the my most infinite... My body is a weapon. She had control over the most infinitesimal of emotions. She said she would never touch him again. Then she wouldn't. Mm. The problem was that he didn't actually want that. Mm. Despite the shivering anxiety and the ocean-deep nausea brought on by every touch, he wanted to touch her. To be touched by her. Ooh. Skin to skin. Even cloth to cloth. Whoa. Without feeling like he was drowning. Whoa. Good. He should have said, with a curt nod to end the discussion. Instead, he said, but I do want it. Ooh. He kept his attention fixed on the Kruga between them, counting it quickly and dividing it into equal shares, but he could feel her eyes on him, dissecting him down to the bone. You want it, she repeated. I want you. Ooh. <laughs> Setting the money aside, he wrapped one. This is one? I'm sorry. <laughs> Setting the money aside. How do we keep the tension for four more? <laughs> oh, just wait, my friend. Ah. Oh, just wait. Oh, my Gross. God. Setting the money aside, he wrapped one hand around the head of his cane, leaning his weight into it as he looked up to meet her eyes. She studied him like he was a problem to be solved, the blueprint to some fascinating piece of architecture she intended to break into and rob blind. All right, she finally said, then let's figure out a way to make that happen. Two. They started oh. with her knives. What? <laughs> They're going to work on touching. With knives. All right. <laughs> it became a ritual between them. When the night was thick and still, their work done and the club quiet beneath them, and Nezh gave Kaz her weapons. She handed them over one at a time, sliding each one from its sheath to offer to him hilt first, the flat of the blade caught between her thumb and forefinger as she waited for him to accept them. Uh -huh. Liquid dark eyes meeting his every time, asking silent permission before pressing the hilt into his palm. Kaz She's touching him through the sword. <laughs> I mean, they're I a little bit like, smaller no, than swords. I feel like there's going to be more going at knife, 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 knife. 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 She's giving her his weapons to <laughs> like a... Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Touching wait, wait. you, touching is she, me. That is, knife. Is, <laughs> is she giving him the knives as like an extension of her skin? Just wait, just wait. <laughs> By the transitive property, they're touching because they're both touching the knife. No, that's not how the transitive property works. That is how the transitive property works. <laughs> it is not. I'm touching the knife. You're touching no, the knife. No, it would be like I am the knife and the knife is you and so that we are each other no <laughs> no that is the it. transitive property i'm touching the knife the knife is touching you i'm touching you that's how, that's how the transitive property works we've thought about this Here. before and it continues to not be true <laughs> disagree no. misuse of transitive property if a equals b and b equals c a must equal c yeah but I, i'm not gonna get it <laughs> Let me fit. Let me let me read this, and it'll it'll right. illuminate uh, why the knife okay, is happening. Okay, Kaz couldn't feel the metal through the leather of his gloves, but he felt the pressure, and it translated to warmth as he curled his fingers around it, mm. setting it aside on the vanity table. Rationally, he knew the metal would be cold, but he imagined it holding onto the warmth of her body, mm. like each blade had been sheathed right up against her skin. Mm. Inej waited patiently for him to accept the next knife. 
Dropping his gaze, Kaz didn't let himself linger as he took it and lined it up next to its brethren. It wasn't warm. It didn't hold her body heat. And if it did, he would find no pleasure in the sensation. She had monikers for all her knives, each one named after one of her precious saints. She is like, that's like part of her like heritage. There's like a religious saint mm. worshiping okay. aspect. When she prayed, she prayed with a knife clasped flat between her palms, the tip pointing up like it was one of her fingers, an Ooh. extension of her hands. Kaz didn't pray. He had no saints to look to when things got bad. He just had her. When she placed the knife against his palm, she used both hands, one cradling the hilt and the other feather light against the point of the blade. She didn't let go immediately, her touch lingering against his glove, and he held his breath as he waited for her to move. As soon as she released the knife, the ritual would be over. If they were different people, they wouldn't need such complicated constructs in order to touch each other. If he were different. Unfurling her fingers from around the hilt, Inej grazed her thumb against the glove's leather, where the base of his thumb met his wrist, and his breath hitched sharply. Oh. Her eyes were wide as she waited for his reaction, mm. and he had to force himself not to shiver away from her touch. It's no different from shaking hands, he told himself sternly, and he did that every that day, so without different. flinching. <laughs> it's so different. <laughs> This is a weird, sexy ritual that's going on. <laughs> is she just, like, okay, like, I was, like, in, I was so in it. And then I was like, wait, is she just, like, handing him a knife? And then he's putting it down and handing him a knife and he's putting it down. I mean, it's, but it's very slow and meaningful. But it's very slow and meaningful, but, like, in, like, a, re, in a reality way. <laughs> in a reality way, yes. But, like, in a reality way, normally someone isn't, like, so... Intent. It's a lot. Of, there's a lot of intention. Right. It's a, it's, it's a way for him, for, she's just like, I'm just giving you my knife. And you're just putting it down. And we're just slowly brushing. And this gloves. isn't this isn't a way for me to brush my fingers against you. Your glove. Your glove. It's no different from shaking hands, he told himself sternly. And he did that every day, without flinching, as distasteful as it was. It was skin on leather, not skin on skin, and he could bear it. Cause? Inej said softly. The pressure of her thumb against the inside of his wrist felt like a jolt of electricity surging up the length of his arm, currents digging their way into his nerves and tendons until his skin was crawling with them. Grinding his teeth, he fought to keep his hand steady under her knife, but of course she noticed. She let go and dropped her arms to her sides like she had never been touching him at all, except for the phantom shock still buzzing up and down his limb. You don't have to push yourself like this, she said quietly. With the curl of his lip, Ka set the knife down on the vanity. Yes, I do. We have time. We can go as slowly as you need. There's no reason you have to. I told you, he interrupted. I want it. She fell silent, still looking at him with wide eyes, her lashes painting sooty shadows against her cheekbones in the dim orange glow of the room. I want to be able to touch you without all this getting in the way. Oh, mm -hmm. buddy. His history, his trauma. Very different reactions. The memory of gray bloated <laughs> flesh sloughing off under his hands, salt water burning his throat and flooding his lungs. It had happened so many years ago. There was nothing left but memories, like a bad dream. He grimaced, frustrated with his own weakness. So basically, uh, through a variety of circumstances, Kaz and his older brother were left homeless in Ketterdam. Oh, okay. And they were homeless and living on the streets when a plague happened. Ooh. And so the reason why he has this touch aversion is because him and his brother both got sick with the plague. Um, oh, okay. And he was like sleeping under a bridge and was like in and out of consciousness. And he wakes up like his fever breaks. Mm. He survives the plague, but he wakes up on a like plague barge full of dead bodies. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. So he uses his brother's dead body as like a floaty to kick himself back. Yeah. I'm to the sorry. City. What? The trauma is high That's in so this book. Okay, like YA, okay. Grace. It's YA. That's so fucked up. First of all, but second of all, that that wouldn't immediately. And I was raking leaves when I heard that in the audio book. <laughs> that wouldn't immediately. And I was like, this is dark. <laughs> translate to a touch aversion. Why? I don't know. It like it's traumatic. Like I can't be around dead bodies, or I can't. It's like, that he was like about, under all of them. So it's like he was being touched everywhere oh, yes. by okay. these oh, okay. buried, and then he realizes yeah. like he's not so, like the top layer. So no. his like most prominent like flesh yes. memory is dead bodies, and, and then his he brother. remembers because yeah. uh, he used his brother's dead body, Gross. and he remembers the feel of the dead flesh. That's 
fucking disgusting. Yes. So that's yeah. that's where it comes from. Okay, no, that does my. Okay. And so that's what yeah, yeah, yeah. he thinks about every time he he's touches like flesh, touching someone, gross. or thinks about touching someone as gross. he remembers that memory. Yeah, that's that's gross. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. It happened so many years ago. There was nothing left but memories, like a bad dream. He grimaced, frustrated with his own weakness. Do you want to touch people? She asked in a small voice. Or just me? He could have laughed. Inej, I've never wanted to touch anyone before you. You're the only one. Aw. Her eyes were dark and deep enough to drown in, and it was terrifying, staring into them as he bared his soul to her. He wanted to mask the truth with a sneer and an insult, something cruel and cutting to hide his heart. But he trusted her with Mask his life. my vulnerability with a cutting remark. <laughs> he trusted her with his life, his money, and his business. So why not give her the rest of it, too? Why not give her everything he had? And if she wanted it, wanted him, then maybe he could stop running himself ragged every waking moment with someone to guard his heart as well as his back. If she didn't want him, then... Then he'd go on, as he had always done, getting sharper and meaner by the year until his armor was so thick no one would ever be able to crack it. And that was fine. It was what he'd always imagined for himself anyway. Wait for me? He asked. I'm less than you deserve. But wait. I can make myself into something better. Something less broken and jagged around the edges like a shattered blade. She looked at him like he had just cut his still-beating heart from his chest and held it out to her. Awestruck and sympathetic and horrified, but not pitying. She knew how he abhorred pity. I'll wait, she promised, her voice low and utterly sincere. Oh. Three. He's so fucked and so sad. I know. <laughs> so and, sad. But he's so self-aware. He's trying to get over it. Inej sat at the vanity, her hair twisted up in a high braid, and a gossamer scarf shot through with a glimmering metallic thread lay draped around her shoulders. The vanity mirror was tarnished silver, an ungainly second-hand thing, the same as everything else in Kaz's room. It didn't show her her reflection clearly, turning her image shadowed and ghost-like like she was as much a wraith as the rumors said. Shadow and bone. <laughs> Shadow and ghost. Shadow and ghost. <laughs> Kaz liked her reflection in it. It was easier to look at her like that, easier to imagine himself with her when she was a hazy, half-formed thing. When he looked at her directly, it was like staring into the sun. She was too sharp, too beautiful, too real, solid and warm and touchable and within arm's reach. Pass me my coal. Her makeup sat neatly organized in a small carved wooden box on the bed beside him. He selected the stick of coal from the box and held it out to her. When she took the coal from him, they both held on to it for a second, fingers an inch apart. Kaz kept his hand there for the span of a single breath and then let go, returning to the safety of his cane. The leather creaked as he tightened his grip, and Inaj turned back to the to face the mirror, leaning in close as she lined her eyes with the thick black strokes. Oh, I know what this is. Kaz watched her do it, her hands as steady drawing those lines as they were with her knives. When she was done, she held the coal back to him without turning, but her gaze was calm and sure as she looked at him through her reflection. My mascara? Kaz returned the coal to its box and selected the mascara in turn, but this time, when he held it out to her, their fingers touched. <gasps> Raise your hands, loves. Yes. Ah. Oh. Her eyes flickered up to meet his in the mirror, and he held her gaze, keeping his hand steady. Oh. Just the tips of their fingers brushed. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> I should have seen it. I should have seen we it. We know it was there. We're just immature. I know. Uh, it's a beautiful dumb. idea. It's <laughs> very sexy for nothing happening at all. Just the tips of their fingers brushed. The bare scent of contact through his glove that nevertheless sent sparks shooting up the length of his finger, through his hand, to his wrist, and all the way up to his shoulder to burn their way into his heart like Ooh. an ember. The touch didn't repulse him. Not like this. Not when it was so small and light and only through the leather. But he couldn't bring himself to lean forward and extend the contact either. Lashes coated, Inez turned back to him, offering the mascara. Lipstick, she requested. They didn't touch when he took the mascara back but he braced for contact when he handed the lipstick over. As expected, when she took it from him, her forefinger landed on the top of his, and he bit down on the inside of his cheek to keep from flinching. She waited for him to raise his gaze to meet hers, directly this time, without a mirror to distance them. Her eyes were soft, glittering in the dim light, and infinitely patient. She wouldn't escalate these touches beyond the point he was willing to tolerate, but until he hit it, she would continue. Mm -hmm. That was their unspoken agreement. 
as she pressed the tube of lipstick to her mouth, a red so dark and rich it was almost brown. Cos followed the movement, visually tracing her lips, and imagined that one day he would be able to touch her like that. He could hold the lipstick up to her and watch the plush softness of her mouth dip under the pressure. He didn't kiss nobody in a long time. I know. <laughs> no, you Sad. don't kiss nobody when you be in a bunch of pile of dead bodies. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think the dead bodies touched his mouth. He was Probably. under them, Grace. I'm just saying it was a handsy thing. That's why he wears the gloves. He doesn't wear a mask. I mean, right? But but hands are primarily how you touch people, Grace. That's I know. I know. <laughs> Say he hasn't kissed anyone in a long time, if ever. He's supposed to be 17, so I don't know. I don't know. He might he be may- a little bit older. He may have never kissed anybody. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. He might be 18. I can't remember. No one cares. The crows are different ages. They're between the crows 17 and like 20. Sure. And I think he's like maybe 17, 18. Whatever. Sure, Doesn't sure, matter. Sure, 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 sure. He could hold the lipstick up to her and watch the plush softness of her mouth dip under the pressure, or put his finger to her lips and feel the lipstick coat it, his fingertip coming away, stained red. Not with blood, for once, but from a kiss. (laughs) Okay. Yikes. Four. Ah! Sequestered behind Kaza's desk, Inej set her back to him, head inclined ever so slightly to reveal the graceful line of her neck. Her hair was pulled up in an elaborate braid, and one of her newer knives securing the top of it, the hilt nestled in <laughs> snugly against the back of her skull. No, 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 no. You're going to cut your hair that way. I'm pretty, no, I'm pretty sure this is a canonical thing, where she has a knife in her hair. Wouldn't that cut your hair? I don't know. I feel like it would cut Only your hair. Only if you're, like, moving it around. Well, I'm saying that like, you have to put it in at some point. Yeah, have you never put in a French pin? Have you put a knife in your hair, Claire? It will cut your hair. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. A French pin doesn't have a blade on it. I see your point. <laughs> Just slide it in at some point. You'd have to really do that on purpose. As long as you're careful. I think you're going to cut your hair. <laughs> Probably, but maybe not. And maybe the way it's positioned, like if it's ingrained with all the other hairs. Yeah, like if you follow like the... Sure. The, the flow. The flow of the hair. Like if you're going with the direction of hair. Like when you shave, you go like against it. No, I know, I know. But I'm like saying like if you're it. in a braid situation and you shove a knife inside it it's gonna the hair. i don't think so i don't know man. I feel like this is who's a gonna sacrifice thing. their hair to try nobody <laughs> i feel maybe like you have the thickest hair i feel like, like it not, should be you i don't want to shear my hair maybe the braid experience. is like not our version of what a braid looks mm-hmm. like it is it is anyway <laughs> well then i got nothing my friend <laughs> Her hair was pulled up in an elaborate braid, one of her newer knives securing the top of it, the hilt nestled in snugly around the back of her skull. Kaz stood behind her, hands flexing by his sides, the leather of his gloves creaking before he took a steadying breath and relaxed his fingers, raising both hands to touch her hair. Mm. After the business handshakes and the rush of physical violence, touching her hair with his gloved hands was the next easiest thing. Mm -hmm. There was no skin involved, not even body heat. Careful not to touch her scalp, he found the knife's hilt and gently drew it out of her hair, metal sliding smoothly. It sliced off all her hair. That's what I'm saying, dude. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Your whole braid is fucked. How does this mic keep moving? I don't understand. <laughs> out of excitement. What am I doing? How am I fucking up this mic? <laughs> During the uh, dream episode, I was so flummoxed both by like the episode but also by like the audio <laughs> issues that we were having that I like didn't check my mic level and I was like way too goddamn loud. It's fine. That's easy to fix. <laughs> it's easy to fix it to be too quiet. It is but I also like <laughs> felt like a noob. I was like what the fuck? Why did I make I this problem? Do you believe that I have like done this podcast for years? No. 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 I haven't. You haven't. No. <laughs> we're all babies. Uh, he drew the knife out metal sliding smoothly from its braided sheath. When it was free, he leaned around her shoulder to set it on the desk before her. Thank you, she murmured, like he was the one doing her a favor. He didn't acknowledge her words beyond a short dip of his chin, his attention fixed on the long black ribbon winding through the length of her hair down to the very bottom, where it wrapped around the loose end of her braid like a tourniquet. Hmm. His fingers found the place where it was knotted, and he slipped it free rather than trying to untie it, lacking the delicate dexterity of his bare fingers that such a job would require. He could take off his gloves and feel her hair like silk against his fingers, and maybe it would feel enough like silk that he could finish unbraiding it without the, that familiar wave of panic nausea rising up to overwhelm him. Ooh, is he going to take off his gloves? <laughs> what? He's going to take off his gloves and like touch her hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. Not her skin. You're, you're Disrupt jumping, your hands. You're We're jumping on way ahead. Four. <laughs> the temptation only lasted a second. Besides, she might not want him touching her hair with his bare hands. The others had likely done that, and while Cause wasn't a gentle man, he knew he had her trust. He wasn't the cause, then, of the tension in her shoulders, or the way she held her neck so stiffly, like she was bracing herself for this touch as much as he was. So, Inej, she was, like, stolen from her family. Oh, oh wait. And trafficked. sold into, she was, she was like, sex trafficked. Yeah, gross. And so... Uh, that's how Cause found her. It was because he was like visiting a brothel to like barter information with and he was like, like a wow, mistress. a fifteen year old. <laughs> what? And he was like, wow, a fifteen year old. That's sure. not good. He thought it's a seventeen year old. <laughs> the story is so he was like there to talk to the mistress of this brothel because they trade information. Because obviously, mm. if you're like a madam at a brothel, you, you probably have hear some stuff. Information. Yeah. Um, and Inej sneaked up on him, and Cause oh. is like, no one sneaks up on me like so this girl's good right so so he bought out her contract ah uh, okay. at the brothel okay so like that's that's the story of how he found her and so so she has her own that's what makes the relationship so interesting is he has physical trauma with like the whole touch of first thing but so does she yeah in the book they have this moment where she is like it's also not easy for me like yeah. this is not yeah fun for me also yeah like i am working on this Cause concentrated on the weight of her hair in his hands. Mm. If she could trust herself to him like this, then he could return the favor. Reaching the top of the braid, he tugged the ribbon loose from where it wound tightly around her hair, like a snake swallowing its own tail. Unbound, her hair fell like a dark waterfall down her back, reaching almost to the floor. He held the ribbon out to her, and she reached over her shoulder to accept it, her fingers meeting his for a split second before taking the ribbon and coiling it into a tight spiral to sit on the desk beside her knife. I could braid it for you sometime, he said quietly. Braid <gasps> your hair? That's so much touching. If you wanted. <laughs> Do I you know how to braid hair? hair? She teased. My, that was my next question. Twisting around the chair to look at him over her shoulder. I can learn. It's not that hard. All right, all right, all right. It does feel nice. Her so gaze nice. dropped to the gloved hands before rising again, and he resisted the urge to clench his fists. But she just said, if you like, like it was nothing. Though, not now. Unless, she added, lifting her hairbrush from the desk, would you like to brush it? <gasps> Do you boys the- understand the pleasure of having your hair played <laughs> but also, with? also, that's like an extra, like, he's holding the brush. He's not touching her hair. Right. Oh but it's right. still the, like... But it's still, like, such a... The connection. Again, like, touching hair, playing with hair is a very, like, intimate yes, thing. Yes, I don't know. If they, I don't think they know. I don't think they know. I don't think they know. No. That, like, how... How it feels. How bonding this moment is. <laughs> Except Cos Brecker does know. Yes. That's what's satisfying to read about this. Finally, somebody yes, gets yes. it. Someone understands. Someone gets it. I just want my hair played with. <laughs> Taking the brush from her, Cos carefully oh, gathered her hair in his other hand. He set the brush against her scalp and pulled it gently through her hair, <gasps> letting the strands whisper against the leather of his gloves. Oh. And Nez shut her eyes as he worked, her head moving ever so slightly in the direction of each stroke. He brushed her hair until he had no excuse to do it anymore. Then he set the brush aside and gathered her hair up in his hands, relishing the soft density of it, the rose scent and the way it caught the light, before sweeping it forward over her shoulder so that it fell down her front like a cascade of jewels. Opening her eyes, Inej raised one hand to her collarbone to touch her hair, as she might touch a necklace, and caught his hand before he could withdraw it. (gasps) She didn't grasp hold of him, though he could have borne it, Instead, she rested her hand atop his, so lightly that he could barely feel the touch at Just all. Dips touching dips. Her palm on top of his glove and her hair underneath it. He wanted to put his arm around her, wrapped across her chest to hold her against him, Ooh. leaning down to press his chest against her shoulder blades, to embrace her tightly enough that he could feel her heartbeat against his, Ooh. the expansion of her ribs with every breath she took, the animal warmth of her body and the softness of her skin. There were a thousand reasons why he couldn't do it. The possessiveness of the action was only one. Instead, he let his hand remain where it was, trapped under hers, and he leaned in fractionally, not close enough to touch, but only close enough to smell the perfume of her hair. Shutting his eyes, he inhaled deeply and imagined that he was holding her, and she was holding him, and she was warm and breathing (laughs) and so alive that as long as he was touching her, he never had cause to think of corpses again. See, okay, that's what I was going to say. I was like, I feel like she's really got to, like, emphasize the, like, non-deadness of your body. Like, feel my heart 
beat, feel my warmth. Yes, yes, yes. Look at my blood. Yes. Like anything that just reminds you that I'm not in fact a dead body. No, yeah, exactly. There's like a, a like readjusting. Of I like, am alive. This is not as similar as your brain thinks it is. No. Yep. It's like actually, we're, we're in like fact, re- incredibly different. Yeah, like we're like retraining yes. this like thought pattern. It's like part of it is probably too that like, if the very last time you touched someone, like, was a dead body, and then you like didn't it's, immediately like yeah, like it's just like person. festering in your brain. Yeah. Like yeah. the more you're like, oh my god, the you last time I like had sensation on my shoulder was when like a whole ass body yeah. was touching me. Yeah, he didn't like, immediately. That's like, gonna the that's, that's gonna fester like a dead body. Fester, that's gonna fester. It's gonna uncle fester. That's <laughs> uncle I get fester. it. Uncle Fester. That's, I get it. I'm like, the more, yeah, like, he didn't the more you get in your head about it, the worse it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Right. Like, because he hasn't touched anybody, that's like the main touch oh, memory. Oh, 100%. Yes, it's making has. it way more of a block. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Five. Yes. There's, it's five plus one. Grace. I know, I know, I know, but we're so close. They lay facing each other on his rickety little bed. Ooh. Their elbows folded under them to prop their heads up. Legs stretched out long, and Nej lay on one side with her knees crooked forward just a little, so that if she were any closer, they might nudge against his own. But Kaz lay on the very edge of the bed, as far away from her as he could get yeah. without leaving the mattress entirely, yeah. his bed even tenser than hers. It was the first time she had ever been in his bed, the first time anyone had. I don't think either of us are going to get much sleep like this, Nej said, and though her tone was light, her eyes were dark and cautious. Fully apart. <laughs> I don't Falling care. Off the bed. They were fully clothed on top of the sheets. She had set her knives aside and he had left his cane propped up in the corner. But otherwise, they were exactly as they always were. They had made no commitment to spending the night together. Frankly, Cuz doubted they would last more than a few minutes. As much as he liked the idea of falling asleep beside her, of waking up to the sight of her mere inches away, in practice, the situation terrified him. The thought of accidentally drawing near her in his sleep, of waking with limbs entangled. Oh, God. Sleeping bodies were too similar to dead ones. Yeah, God. Yeah, I I immediately also thought of that. Yes. (laughs) When Inej opened her mouth again. (laughs) Claire's face was accurate. (laughs) (laughs) The sleeping body is very similar to a dead one if you've experienced it. When you wake up, when you're the first one to wake up again, are you going to look over and be like, wow, Grace is dead. It's like a dead one. Really like, I do sleep like a dead person. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like, I feel like yesterday, like how do you sleep? I I feel like there was a moment of like half consciousness where like it wasn't this morning because I I slept really well last night because I wore a face mask or an eye mask which really helped the night before where me and Claire were both having like weird like half wake up experiences I we're remember having a lot of sensory experiences. I remember it I think it was like a little bit light out and I I remember my mouth was wide open like I was just like <laughs> and I feel like Claire probably saw me but I don't know I don't think I saw you like I had enough wherewithal to be like I really hope Claire isn't awake to see me with my mouth open but not to <laughs> shut my mouth because I was like I was 80% asleep wow. so like I feel like I would have looked pretty dead <laughs> in that moment <laughs> <laughs> an experience that is only an experience that's only for me. Your butt did yell again. <laughs> and it made me feel safe. <laughs> I fart in my sleep. That's what I do. I can't eat cheese. But like, <laughs> but like in a very loud way. Like if a butt could yell. And it made I me like. I try so hard to hold in my farts like during the day. And my <laughs> night, my nighttime dead body just like. It's really pretty funny not because it's a, a fuck. It's a very like insight into like what your body is doing because. I don't have IBS, but I do have gas. It's just, it's just like it's funny. It like, it just like made me like, <laughs> and then I like rolled over and went back to sleep. I can't describe it. If I knew, if I could predict it, I would love to record it, <laughs> just so that I could it's play like it for you. When you wake up, just immediately start audio recording, just in case. Because no, it's like no, no, no. weird. It's like such a, it's such a unique noise. Okay, well, I'm glad you didn't roll over and see my no. fully open mouth. I mean, it seems mouth. like it's loud enough that I would have heard it, but I have not heard it. Yeah, and and maybe you're still asleep. It's weird because it's like not like what you would think a traditional fart sound <laughs> would sound like. But like you're like that's the only thing it could be. But it's really like a yell from the butt. <laughs> like a, a vocal cordless. 
But wait, it's like not that short. It's more like, ah! <laughs> and it's just like dead silent. Oh I can't describe it because it, it, it has to echo. I'm assuming. It, yeah, I think it's because I sleep with my legs like fully splayed. So my butt is just open. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel safe. So. Someone else. You know, she's not dead. Someone she's else is dead. alive and in this room. We're all just experiencing <laughs> life. Regardless of my like, well. uh, like open mouth splay. Sleeping bodies were too similar to dead ones unless yeah. you're Grace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Inej opened her mouth again, her expression suggesting that they call the whole thing off, he curled his hand into a fist in the bed between them and set his jaw. I want this, he said between clenched teeth. It doesn't look like it, but I do. I want to be able to share a bed with you and Aww. touch you without worrying that I'm going to throw up. Oh. He met uh, her eyes. Not what furious. You want to hear. <laughs> I know. Furious with himself for his weakness and for putting all this on her as if it were her responsibility to fix him. But she looked at him the way she looked at her saints, like he was something wondrous and holy, even as her black eyes flickered with her own fears. He forced himself to finish. I want to give you everything, he said, his voice cracking. Aww. You already have. Aww. Aww. Her fingers twitched like she wanted to reach across the field oh, just she between wants to touch them. him. Yes. Touching On his me, skin. Touching you. Sweet in Bump, bump, bump. Guess a breaker wasn't bad. <laughs> so good. So good. It's so not. Good. <laughs> her fingers twitched like she wanted to reach across the few inches between them and cover his hand with hers. Oh. He wanted that too. Fuck. He wanted everything. I want to kiss you, he confessed. <gasps> oh, that would be a big deal. <laughs> her breath caught and her gaze dropped to his lips for an instant before stuttering back up to his eyes. I want that, she whispered, but I don't think I can. That's all right. We can just... She cut herself off as if a sudden thought had occurred to her, and she sat up and swung her legs off the side of the bed to stand, heading for the vanity. Sweeping one of her knives off the table, she returned to the bed and her own position, holding her smallest blade between them. He raised his eyebrows, expectantly awaiting her explanation. Uh-huh. Maintaining eye contact, Inej raised the knife to her mouth and pressed her lips to the flat of its blade, just as she kissed every knife in prayer before letting them fly. Okay. But when she prayed, her eyes were shut, not dark and burning with intensity as they were now. Kaz's mouth went dry, watching her, his heart fluttering, not in sick anxiety, but in tremulous anticipation. Uh-huh. And he clenched his fingers in the bedsheets in a desperate attempt to ground himself. Breaking the kiss, Inez turned the knife so that the part of the blade that had been against her lips was facing him. She held it away from him a fraction of an inch. The intensity in her eyes never dimmed, but nervousness flickered alongside it as she waited for him to consent. He only had to lean forward the slightest amount in order to meet her knife, and as soon as he did, she pressed the blade against his mouth. The so metal weirdest was... 90 10. <laughs> the metal was cool except for that one spot where she had kissed it, and warmth blossomed against his lips as did the dark smudge of her lipstick left behind from her touch. His lips parted as she pressed her knife against them, breath fogging the steel as they stared at each other over the tip. His heart raced as madly as it would from a real human touch. If she pressed any harder, the knife's edges would bite into his lips and draw blood. He could already taste it, bursting out fat and hot, glistening like pomegranate seeds and tasting like dirty copper. He let her do it if she wanted. He let her drive the blade right through his ribs if she wanted. Kaz, she whispered. Her tone was as reverent as it was in prayer. Saints, you look... Kaz sucked in a breath as his eyes fluttered shut and he pursed his lips, offering the knife the kiss he wished he could offer her directly, and she gasped softly in return. The pressure against his mouth lessened as she made to withdraw, and he flicked his tongue out to follow the knife, oh. opening his eyes in time to see her shocked expression. Yeah, same. That is shocking. <laughs> Good? He asked hoarsely. Uh, come back. <laughs> <laughs> she traced the line of the knife with one fingertip like she wanted to be touching his lips, uh. following the slanted line of his mouth from one corner to the other. Maybe one day she would be able to. His mouth and his cheekbones, the sharp lines under his eyes, his temples and his hair. Maybe one day she would be able to touch him everywhere, places no one else had ever touched, had never even seen the skin of. He bit back a shiver and she froze, immediately ready to give him space. But he shook his head. Ooh! Don't stop, he said, <gasps> one hand on the mattress between them like an invitation. 
She dropped her hand to rest against his, their fingertips brushing each other so carefully it was like they weren't touching at all. Hesitantly, like he wasn't sure he was allowed, he reached for her hair. It was bound in a looser braid than usual, each strand thick and billowy. She brought it forward over his shoulder, silently granting him permission to do as he liked. Mm -hmm. He didn't touch it at first, just ghosted his fingers over its long line, committing its pattern to memory. <laughs> Only when he had run down its entire length did he dip his fingers to make contact, touch it. Li lighting down gently like he was afraid of it, even though he had brushed her hair a dozen times before. He let the braid coil against his palm like a snake, gravity running in between his thumb and forefinger like it had a mind of its own, dropping rope-like to the bedsheets and drawing patterns like calligraphy in black ink. Catching the thickest part of it, where it hung over her shoulder, closer to his skin, he pressed his lips to it before he could think too long about the action. Oh my god! It felt sleek and glossy against the thin skin of his lips, and he stayed there for a second until So his close to her skin! <laughs> until his heart kicked up in panic, and he had to withdraw. The anxiety subsided immediately, nothing like the drawn-out drowning most touches inspired. Kiss cat. All right? He asked. She looked at him with stars in her eyes with entire galaxies. He wanted her to look at him like that always. He would do anything to make it happen. Oh my God. Even kiss her. I'm not ready. Six. Ah! Ah! <laughs> How is this gonna climax? <laughs> it wasn't the worst hit Kaz had ever taken. Oh no. Not even the worst in recent memory. A rival gang had got the jump on him outside the club. Oh, no. And one of them had landed a lucky hit to his oh, no. face before Kaz had taken their knees out with his cane. The whole fight had been over and done with within 30 seconds, the rest of the gang dragging themselves into the nearest alley to lick their wounds. Still, when he prowled into the crow club, he put more weight on his cane than usual, his limp more pronounced for having taken a beating, and he drew Inej's attention immediately. She had been shadowing Jesper at the bar, but she flitted away into the crowd as soon as she saw Kaz, following him upstairs on silent feet, all but invisible to the rest of the club's patrons. I'm fine, Kaz said, not turning around as he headed straight for the sink, tugging his gloves off as he went. Your face doesn't look fine, she retorted, coming up to look at him in the mirror. He studiously ignored his own reflection as he washed his hands. He would have a black eye by the morning. The skin was hot and tender already, a bruise blossoming over his cheekbone where he had been punched. His assailant had been wearing a ring, by the feel of things, something Ugh. bulky and ostentious. You should get some ice on that, Inej said. Drying his hands, Kaz retrieved his gloves from the lip of the sink and held them in one hand, turning to face her. She looked up at him critically, her sharp gaze cataloging his every injury, before determining that he was as fine as he said he was. Her expression softened. Let me? Swallowing, he nodded, and stepped aside to give her access to the sink. She ran a clean cloth under the cold water before dousing it with a disinfectant, stinging stuff that he always kept on hand. Crude, but it did the job. Inej stepped forward, telegraphing her movements more than usual, and giving him time to back away, or raise his cane to block her. Holding his ground and his breath, Kaz kept his gaze trained on her as she leaned into his space, mm -hmm. standing on her toes to reach, and raise the cloth to his face. He flinched at the first touch, eyes blinking shut for a split second before he forced them open to watch her. She was intent on her work, not looking at him so much as at his injury, eyes focused as she dabbed the wet cloth over the cut on his cheek. The disinfectant served as a distraction from the physical contact, the softness of the cloth rasping over tender, broken skin. It was easier to be touched when it hurt, but that wasn't the kind of thing he wanted to say I was to say, her. He just got punched probably by some skin. I know. So that's... Weird. But he didn't like it. Well, no, but like it happened and he didn't have a panic attack. Right. <laughs> like, but that, that realization that it's easier to be touched with when pain. It hurts. Mm. Kinky. But he knows he's like, that's not the thing. I want to like, say. I don't want it this way. No, that's I want not it that way. what I'm looking for. All right, she asked, glancing at him directly for the first time. He nodded, not trusting himself to speak. She held the cloth pressed to the side of his face gradually warming from the heat of her hand and his skin. The sharpness of the pain was subsiding, settling into a dull ache, and it would heal within a few days. She shifted the cloth ever so slightly, and his heart skipped a beat, realizing what was about to happen before it actually occurred. The side of her thumb grazed his cheek, and his breath caught in his throat as he stood locked in place, staring wide-eyed down at her. 
He couldn't feel her touch at first under the freezing terror coursing through him and electrifying his skin. She stared up at him in return, unblinking and uncertain, not moving her thumb or the cloth away from his face. The water rose around him, salt water flooding his lungs as the stench of death choked up his throat and oh, threatened no. to gag him. Oh no. He was Careful. drowning. Oh no, trauma response. It's happening. He was drowning, the ocean of dead pulling him under. No, his no, skin, no, no, no. His skin going as cold and clammy and fish belly white as the corpses, oh. and a rush of wind and waves and screaming. Take a breath, it's his, okay. His own voice, wrenching broken from his bloody throat, filled his ears like a rush of blood to the head. Cause? Inej pressed her thumb into the bruise, and the pain lanced through him like a fresh blow, jolting him back to the present. The room was silent. No screams echoed off its walls, and his throat wasn't bleeding. His clothes weren't waterlogged, and he wasn't dead, and neither was she. No. His eyes met hers, and though he felt shaken, drowning in dry air, she met him steadily, her hand firm against the side of his face. Do you want me to stop? Drawing a shuddering breath, Ka shook his head, and the water receded. Stop. Inch by inch, it pulled away from him, draining from his lungs, and while he could still taste the rough, bitter salt at the back of his throat, it no longer crashed over him in a wave. Her skin was warm against him, hot even, burning like a brand against his darkening bruise. Hot and alive. Brown where the corpse had been gray, a pulse thrumming under her thumbprint, blood rushing through her healthy veins. He couldn't remember the last time anyone had touched his bare skin. He let his point. eyes fall closed again, and inhaling deeply, he raised his hands to close around her forearm. <gasps> Gloves off, he couldn't bring himself to touch her hand, but he wrapped his fingers around her arm, where what? it was covered by her shirt, and shivered at the sensation of rough cotton against his naked palms. Inez Wait, held... he doesn't have gloves on? Yeah, he, he did was washing his hands sans gloves. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh my god. So everything's, and... <laughs> everything's happening so much more now. Inej held still like she was afraid he might shatter if she yeah. moved even a fraction of an inch. <laughs> He's touching her. Not even daring to breathe and break the careful equilibrium between them. Yeah. Turning his face into her hand, eyes still closed, Kaz felt the delicate skin of her wrist against his lips <gasps> and, pressed, <laughs> and pressed the ghost of a kiss there <gasps> over her pulse. Oh my God. Kaz. I can't handle it. I'm too excited. Inej, he murmured against her skin. Ah! It was everything he wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. He felt Inej cautiously lift her other hand and touch his hair. <gasps> so lightly, he wouldn't have felt it at all if you weren't so sensitive to the slightest of touches, if you weren't so attuned to her, particularly. And he parted his lips, not tasting her, just drinking her in. Stay with me tonight, he asked. Stay with me forever, he oh didn't say. <laughs> oh he God. never would. Oh my God. Yes, she whispered, and pressed two fingers to the furrow between his brows, in a benediction like he was something worthy of being blessed, not jagged or broken like a shattered blade at all. Fiend! Good God. That was great. That was good. <laughs> that was... Such Snaps. a great 5 plus 1. Exactly, yeah. exactly what I want in a 5 plus 1. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Perfect build. I felt so many feelings. Yes. So many feelings. I read this and I and like technically they don't kiss, which no. is maybe a theme I mean, that I've developed is like none of and the last three fix none of none of them. You love you love pretty a tease. woman. We don't kiss on the mouth. But they also didn't do anything. It was the it's the the tension the tension truly like yeah. the kiss on the on the wrist. I was like I didn't think that was gonna Hot. happen. Hot. Very, it's a very like, vulnerable, better than delicate than. area. Ugh. Yes. Yes. Good shit. He felt the pulse. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. And I, okay. And that was what I was waiting for. I was like, where's the like recognition of her aliveness that like not cures you, but like makes you realize you're not amongst dead baddies. Yes. Pulse point, which makes a lot of sense. Yes. This is good writing. <laughs> good job. This is good writing. So good. good Thanks, job. Sharky. So good. Sharky. I'm mad at you, though. So good. <laughs> Thank you, Sharky. Aggressively mad at you. <laughs> you made Grace feel feelings. You made me feel a lot of feelings. <laughs> she hates feeling feelings. Stop it. So the end notes are, this Ooh, is yes. more vibes than canon, which is true, but also like... It's I, not canon, it feels it, like. It, it feels within the canon. Mm -hmm. In my, it feels like post-canon. That's kind of mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. I interpreted mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. Everything is cobbled together from the show and what I know of the book. So if something is off, just look the other way. That's fine. So there we go. Woo! What a opener. What an opener. <laughs> what an opener. What? Really an gentle opener. opener. Yeah. <laughs> to lead in to the rest of what we're going to do. Yes. 
Okay. So with that in mind, how are we introducing, do you just want to say what the prompt is for next week? Season six is all about reduxing, redoing prompts that you have uh, said are your favorites that we have used in the past at some point. Um, And the person who initially gave the prompt is finding the prompt. So I believe next week is me doing a fix it fic. Yep. Right? Hell yeah. Okay, I good. Because that's what I brought. I was just checking. <laughs> Hell yeah. Claire originally did a fix it fic for How I Met Your Mother. Yes. And yes. I am not doing that. I'm doing a fix it fic for something else. So come back next week to pop into the, the more regular vibe. It will. I feel like it will not have this many feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Season six is about feelings. But it will be fun. And, and it'll fun. be fun. Good. Yes. And fun then, and, and feelings. then Claire will find something, and then I will find something, and Claire will find something, and I will find something. And then that'll as, be the season. That is as the show. As per usual. That's the show. If you would like to get little sneak peeks of the rest of the season or just stay in contact with us, there's a number of ways you can do that. So many. You can email us at finepairingspodcast at gmail.com. We're at Fine Pairings Podcast on you can do it. TikTok, you can do it. Places. Yes. Instagram, yes, uh, Facebook, technically, yes. and also Tumblr. It's your game. Tumblr. There you go. And it's Fine Pairings Pod on Twitter. And then if uh, you have not gotten enough of us for $5 a month, you can get two new episodes every month, even on the off season, which is especially fun. So you can be a year round fan. And that is at patreon.com slash fine pairings podcast. You should also leave us a five star review. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. On Apple Podcasts or, or Spotify. Spotify. Both are valid. I'm weirdly invested in how many Spotify reviews we have. We have a lot have. of Spotify reviews. We have they a like- lot. I think we could have more. If you leave a five-star review on either platform, send it in in any of the stuff we mentioned before. You will get a 500-word fan fiction based on your request at the end of the season as a reward and a fun little party for everyone that uh, has helped us gain more following, given us the serotonin of giving us a review, et cetera, et cetera. And we've talked about this. Um, we would love if you would make sure that you leave kudos and comments on any of the fanfics that we mm. read during the season. That is always super, super nice. Uh, the fanfic authors really make this happen, and we love them and appreciate them so much. So go and give them the hype that they yeah. fully, fully deserve. They're, go give Shark Cat some love. Go give Shark some They're love. Great. And like most, most of the authors that we find have other good things. Yes. So you can yes. find more stuff that you like. So yeah, exactly. go give them the hype that they like fully, fully deserve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I think other than that, have a, a great... Shout out to the rest of the season. Fake Vuvuzela. <laughs> I still can't do it. <laughs> wow. That was a noise. <laughs> yeah! Wow. Beautiful. Good. Bye. Bye. Bye.